Good evening, basketball fans, and welcome to another edition of Sports Talk with Rags here in Season 4, Episode 50. And tonight here we have the uh, honor here to uh, talk basketball here with uh, father and son. We're starting off here with uh, Chris Furman, and then later on uh, during this interview we'll bring his dad, uh, Jeff Furman, on. Uh, Chris, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Getting ready for another school year. Start on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's start. I mean, with you know, I know that you uh, came on before, but uh, you know, when you were when you were growing up, I mean, did you play basketball and baseball? Did you think that you would uh, you would be coaching here when you uh, when you were done with college? Yeah, I did. Um, I mean, growing up. You know, probably the first sport I did play is probably baseball because you kind of start that at a little bit of a younger age. Um, right. but yeah, I mean, of course, basketball was always king around around yeah. our house. So <laughs> pretty sure I had a basketball in my crib. Um, so, you know, played basketball, obviously, in high school. But when I was in high school, I knew I wanted to play basketball in college, but I knew ultimately I wanted to coach. Um, right. And – you know, I'm 40 now, you know, back then I definitely had aspirations of probably, you know, coaching collegiately and, you know, maybe even higher than that if, you know, an opportunity presented itself. Um, so, you know, played through high school at Portsmouth Christian, as you know, from I used to come out and watch some of the games and then played at Methodist University for a few years. Um, and then truthfully, I kind of got burned out from playing. I really did. Um and at that same time, which probably kind of factored in a little bit, was when my brother Zach and my cousin Curtis were both playing for my dad at yeah. Fort Christian. And so, you know, I was able to transfer to Old Dominion um, yeah. and kind of start coaching um, as an assistant um, with my dad and getting to coach family. So, which I, you know, always kind of provides its own challenges. I just got done coaching another cousin. He just graduated. <laughs> I was at, uh, you know, playing football at Elon as a freshman. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so it'll, that was fun. But yeah, so I knew in high school that ultimately that's what I you know, wanted to do. So playing was a lot of fun. Um, and, but then once I kind of got a little bit burned out with it, it really wasn't as much fun playing anymore and I didn't you know people ask me you didn't want to try to walk on at ODU and the question is no I, I really did not <laughs> I, I good enough I I can't answer that I did get it's kind of funny I did kind of get a lot better <laughs> as a player I felt like <laughs> once I stopped I don't know if it was just a, a pressure situation in a sense of where you're trying to do all this hoping to be able to play and then once you're kind of done with it you can kind of get back to en enjoying it a little bit more um, I mean, I was still playing a lot of the summer league, adult league stuff and right. playing against a lot of college guys and, and stuff, but just started focusing more on coaching and then <clears throat> finishing up my degree so I could actually start you know, my career, um, which ended up being able to do that and get started at a Western Branch High School. Yeah, and that's where I was going to um, lead right in. I mean, I know that uh, both you and I know, you know, uh, Troy Terry and 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 of course, uh, Mike Donovan was was one of my teachers. But you know, there with uh, starting off there there at Western Branch, you know, uh, Troy was was leading the girls, and so uh, you had an opportunity here to start there with uh, JB Boys being part of uh, Coach Donovan's staff. And then I know when you uh, took over the varsity program, I know that. Uh, Alex Abbey and Jordan Mason and, you know, a couple other of uh, Roland's uh, baseball players uh, definitely uh, started the uh, Bruin Crazies and uh, having a student section there at the home games. Yeah, that was really a lot of fun. And it's, it's, it's pretty interesting and kind of funny now going back because we, but this, this past year at NSA, we did a benefit game at Western Branch. Um, and so we had that time. And then there was a few years before that we played a real game there where they beat us by a couple. We had a chance, I think it was my first year at NSA and we got, we actually had a chance to tie the game um, for the three in the corner and a guy missed it. And, but the place was, was, was packed. And the, I remember specifically 
the student section, like looking at myself and Stuart Biza, you know, who was my assistant when I was a branch and JV coach. And they were looking at us in this way, kind of like these guys aren't ready for this. And I looked at him and I said, they don't realize that we created them. Like, <laughs> you know, and they don't know the history of how that got you know, going again. And so it was kind of funny, but, um, but it was also at the same time pretty neat to kind of just be in that gym and kind of look around and see and um, you know what they were kind of they've been able to do. They've had a lot of success um, in the last you know ten years or so since you know we kind of got it got it going in a good spot and then and left it. They did have a couple down years there. It was you know, kind of left left the cover a little bare there <laughs> for a few. <laughs> Then Coach Hall was able to get it get it rolling and do do some things that uh, were do some really good things there that you know would have been nice. Yeah, I know they they changed the the playoff format, um, right. which definitely I think helped a little bit. Um, but they had some really solid teams and some good players. So. Well, and then also I know with uh, you know following following you and you know talk talk more here about. Uh, you know, when your dad comes on, you know, with uh, you playing for your dad and, you know, um, Zach playing for your dad and watching you guys play. But I know one thing, when you started coaching there at Western Branch and then when you went over to HRA and my nephews on my brother's side were at Greenbrier Christian. So, of course, HRA and Greenbrier Christian, you know, playing each other there with the TCIS, I was always impressed on how with your staff, you know, you had you had a guy that was able to do the stats electronically. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I've always enjoyed stats for both baseball and basketball and then, you know, and then with football. But with basketball, I was definitely old school breaking out the basketball scorebook and, and how you had uh, one guy, no matter where you were at, you know, uh, keeping stats uh, electronically. I was always, I was always impressed. Well, so we'll definitely have to get this episode in front of my, my main man, Brandon Thompson, because he has been by my side since uh, day one at Western Branch and has followed me everywhere. He used to do the stats at Radford. Oh, so okay. When I started at Western Branch, he came with me and we actually used to have a computer with a printer and we would, and he would travel with it every game. And we had a setup at home, which was nice, but on the road, you kind of, you never really knew what the setup was going to look like. Right. And sometimes we had the printer set up in the locker room. And so we, he'd come in at halftime, he'd connect it and, and print out the halftime stats <laughs> and the same thing. Um, and then technology kind of advanced a little bit. And then he was able to have these apps on an iPad. Right. So, so for the last, I think, you know, 10 plus years, he's had an iPad and been able to do the stats there. Um, and then we just kind of get it after the game. And that's typically what I always send to the paper. I mean, I can – there's probably been a handful of times where I've had to call in a score, um, you know, old school, where I'm, you know, reading out <laughs> the game and how many points he had and whatnot. Truthfully, I think I've done it – I haven't done it much at all to the point where I would just get an assistant or something to do it because I'm like, I'm probably going to mess this up. But, you know. <laughs> And so if I couldn't uh, just forward the, the PDF of the stats to him, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have somebody else call this one in. So, right. no, man, well, he, he's awesome. Um, and, I mean, the guy's never been paid a dime. He's always spent you – know, he's spent his own money um, right. to help us out and just a really good friend, loves it, loves, you know, us, loves what we're trying to do. And um, is just a great guy that sacrifices a lot of his own time um, to do that for us. And, you know, I try my best to let him know that I appreciate it, but I know I don't do a good enough job. <laughs> so maybe, maybe we get a chance to listen to this and, you know, like, oh, man, that was really good. But um, wow, he's awesome. He's one of my best friends. And, you know, we don't really get a chance to hang out quite as much with our work schedules until we get to basketball season. So, um, so it's always nice when that time comes and then we get the chance to, to see each other a little bit more. And, um, you know, he's in, he enjoys it and he's looking forward to kind of the new opportunity that we have, you know, starting this year. Right. Yeah. And, um, 
uh, also here with uh, you playing at Portsmouth Christian and, you know, coaching at Western Branch, then to HRA, then to NSA, and, and um, you know, now uh, back at Portsmouth Christian. I mean, even with um, – even with you as a player and you as a coach, I mean, you've definitely seen the competitiveness of high school basketball here in our area even change from when you first started getting into coaching. Yeah, definitely. I really think my my brother was kind of at one of the peaks where there was really, really a lot of talent, especially, I would say, in that, well, in the Metro Conference, especially compared to what it is right now, because there's really not a lot. Um, but, I mean, you had the likes of, you know, McAdoo and Andre Dawkins, right. Stephen Pledger, um, all in the, around the same time frame. And he had to play against all those guys. I mean, truthfully, my my high school career, we didn't play against the high major guys like, like he did. I mean, we got as high as number three in the state. And they only had, I think it was two divisions at the time. Okay. So. It took 16 um, teams in the state playoff. I know it was my freshman year because I think we were like the 16th seed and had to play at Cape Henry, who was the one. And they were pretty low. They had um, Troy Nance, um, James Smith, so some guys that did play Division One basketball um, right. that were really good players. But when Zach played, I mean, they had those guys in name. I'm trying to think about, you know, Dante Hill, who went to Clemson, who then ultimately ended up at ODU. Right. Um, <laughs> He played with a guy, Keith Wright, and went to Harvard and had a very good career. Um, you know, I could keep going if my memory was a little bit better, but there was just a, a, a lot of guys that were going to high major schools in that time frame. Um, but, you know, now, you know, and us, us coaches, we talk about it a little bit. You can't, and I can't really give the exact reason why, but, you know, now there is really – aren't as many high major guys. I would say there's not good players. I mean, there's good players, of course, but I mean, you would go to some events and could look in the stands and there'd be coach K and Roy Williams. out right. there. I, mean, I don't know when the last time, you know, that, that that's kind of happened. I know recruiting is a little bit different now too, but um, you know, so there was really some big time players. We used to have, and some of us have talked about this too. We used to have some, some, a lot of events. Like, I mean, I remember, you know, when um, Norcom was just mm -hmm. awesome on their run and you know finney smith that team went in state championships they had an event at wilson now manor right um you know when they had a really big um upset of finley prep and but th that wasn't the only good game I mean, he had these just powerhouse schools from all over that came to town i also remember watching oak hill play um at oscar smith um when they played against woodside with yeah. Um, Stefan Welsh, those guys. I mean, those were some some talented, talented teams that were coming into the area um, back then and playing some games that you know, I got a chance to watch them. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I think I'm a pretty decent player, and I'm watching these guys, and I'm like, I've got nothing on these guys. <laughs> it's a whole other level right here. So, right. Um, yeah. And so, uh, what's it like here to uh, come back to where you? Uh, you grew up and, and went to high school and leading uh, Portsmouth Christian uh, basketball. Well, definitely excited about it. Um, <laughs> I had to do a presentation in front of the faculty the other day because um, I'm also the director of advancement. So I'm going to try to help you know raise some money so we can you know, do some, some good things over there. Um, right. And one of the things I said to him was that, guys, I never thought I'd actually be back here. Um, <laughs> I, and I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just I kind of always thought I would be, you know, first started at Western Branch and I was kind of with the TCIS school, you know, the bigger schools. And, yeah. you know, at one point I obviously thought I was, you know, would like to go and coach in college, but then kind of, you know, you get a family and realize, you know, how much travel and stuff required um, to do that. And so I was like, okay, I'm content with coaching high school. Um, but now to come to come back, um, it's exciting. I mean, the, the program has been down for some years. Um, it really has. And, you know, we're going to do our best to, you know, not just get it back, I think, to where, where it was when I played or when my brother played, but, you know, try to make it even better than that. I mean, I, you know, we've never won a, a basketball state championship. We did. They did win a football state championship a few years ago. Right. Um, so, you know, our goal is to win a, a state championship. Um, so 
going to try to do what we can to uh, build it up. We've got a, you know, we've got a few transfers um, this year that are pretty solid players, but you know, it'll probably take a few years to get it where we, to where we want it. But, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's exciting. Um, it's, it's nerve wracking at the same time. Yeah. Definitely you're coming back. <laughs> yeah. I've seen so many familiar faces, not just from current faculty that actually taught me when I was there, but people that I went to school with and all of a sudden, like today we had orientation and they're walking through the halls and I'm like, Oh my goodness. I didn't know that, you know, you were here with your son or daughter. Um, and so just kind of crazy how it's all come, come full circle now. Um, well, you know, it was kind of, kind of funny when you were starting out at Western branch. I mean, uh, you know, those, uh, those guys that played for Roland, you know, they were talking to me, they were like, Hey, you know, coach Furman and, I was like, well, I know him as Chris. I know, I know his dad as Coach Furman because, you know, through Elizabeth, you know, uh, her niece, uh, Samantha, you know, there uh, cheered, cheered while you while you played. And Elizabeth always uh, jokes around that, you know, she she would go to one basketball game. But then when we started dating, I was like, I was like, hey, I know uh, I know Chris and. And they're pretty good to watch. So let's uh, l- let's go watch Samantha cheer for a few games. You know, not just one a season. <laughs> yep, yep. No, I'm glad you did, and you're um, hoping to get you back out there for a few games this year. Um, yeah. You know, I'm usually pretty honest on on our team. So if we're if we're going to be fun to watch, I'll make sure I let you know. If not, I'll tell you that too. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the problem with. Uh, Elegant Avenue. I mean, you you have to go, especially when it's a homecoming or a popular game. You you got to go in the first game because it's not that much parking, and I don't want to park down by the softball fields. You know, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to park too far away from campus. That's for sure. <laughs> so, no, but we're hoping to still pack it out. Um, so, you know, homecoming is going to be back for basketball this year because, unfortunately, we weren't able to have enough guys to have a varsity football team. So, so uh, the, they had switched homecoming during football season, you know, like most schools. Um, but, hey, I didn't know it like that. So, I'm, you know, I'm a little right. bit excited about that. I'm like, oh, it's going to be like the old days when I was here <laughs> during basketball season. So, um, but, yeah, that place was always packed out for homecoming. It's yeah. standing room only. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the parking lot that, you know, talk about being the advancement, that's something that's on our list, okay? Like, <laughs> the parking situation here uh, for the future. Because even today we had orientation. I left to go get some lunch, and I come back, and my, somebody's taking my parking spot. I'm, oh, I'm parking out there far away as a teacher. I can't find a good spot. They're all taken. So. Yeah, well, hey, Chris, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for your time. And, yeah, I'll uh, – Come, uh, come check you guys out, and uh, you know I know that uh, Portsmouth Christian is uh, glad to, glad to have you, and I think there's uh, one more uh, basketball person here in your family that will uh, will talk to him here with his uh, Monarch days. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me on here, man. Looking forward to seeing you. All right, sounds good. All right, hey Jeff, how you doing? I could have added a lot more to that conversation there if you wanted, but that's okay. They, oh, you know, no, <laughs> no, that's uh, no. I knew, I knew he'd be a coach from when he was about six or seven years old. Okay, right. it was in his. He, he, you just tell it. He just had the mindset for it, and um, he never. Now we used to joke with him because he was very argumentative. <laughs> we used to say, "Look, I will pay whatever for you to become a lawyer." Okay. <laughs> But uh, no, he let it be known that he was going to be a basketball coach and been real proud of him and happy to see him back at Portland Christian now, too. Right. Well, let's uh, – so since you piggyback there with uh, Chris and, and him uh, uh, coaching, you know, uh, high school basketball and now back at Portland Christian, I mean, what was it – what was it like here when you were, uh, you know, coaching Chris and then when Zach – when Zach was coming – through the varsity program and getting the opportunity of coaching, of coaching Zach also there at uh, high school basketball. Cause there in the Metro, it's, it's always been a competitive, competitive league. You know what? 
as you and y'all were talking to him, I don't know if I was actually his head coach. When I got there, I was the JV coach, and Larry Smith was the varsity coach. Okay. And I think, and I was Larry's assistant. Larry's assistant. Okay. So I was I was there, and I can tell you this: that um, coaching Chris was way simpler than coaching Zach. Okay. Right. Zach, different personalities. Um, not not anything negative here, yeah. but after Zach's, I think it was his. Did he did he play for Campbell two years? Yeah, I think that's two. Years. Okay, so I stepped down um, when Zach still had two years left to play. I okay. felt like he needed to play for somebody else, and Coach Cabra was my assistant. And I told Larry, I said, as long as Cabra gets the job, I'm gonna step down. Right. And so that's what happened. And so I, Zach was just—I um, don't know. Um, I'm not sure how to describe him, but it, I could never figure him out at times. He was right. very. Um, he hit his emotions. I think it's like Zach. Are you are you understanding what I'm saying or not? I don't. I don't know. But he was. Hey, look, I enjoyed like, coaching him. His my nephew Curtis um, being assistant coach with Larry with with Chris on the team. I enjoyed that all, but um, I got I did it for 15 years and then said um, it was time to step down and let Zach play for somebody else. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, and uh, let's see. And for your for your career. I mean, what was it? What was it like when you were when you were growing up? Was it was it mainly uh, basketball, or did you play all the sports? I played baseball and basketball. I started playing basketball in the eighth grade, and um, a assistant coach at the Naval Academy saw me playing the eighth grade because I was playing with his son. Okay, and he told my dad. He said. He said, your son has the potential, his potential to play college basketball. And uh, so my dad tells me this and he said, but you got to work at it. And so my dad actually told me, he said, son, I'm not going to have you get a job in the summer if you'll work at basketball. And so that's what I did. I played basketball all summer, which wasn't like it is today. Right. Okay. Um, we had some summer leagues, just local stuff, but it wasn't like it is today. But then I did that, and then obviously I got the scholarship to Old Dominion in 1973. Yes, and uh, and being part of uh, Monarch basketball, I mean, it was uh, it was definitely you know Monarch basketball there on the on the rise, and you guys made it to the playoffs there uh, freshman year, and then and then sophomore year. They're, uh, you know, cut the cut the nets down there with uh, playing for Sonny Allen. Yep, that's 50 years ago. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, my freshman year, I played behind Joel Copeland. You remember him? He yes. was an All-American, and I played behind him. And when he graduated, I realized I had an opportunity to take his spot. Right. And that's what's funny is I ended up, if you remember Sonny Allen's fast break system, we had a one, two, three, four, and five guy, and Joel was a four. And I thought I'd play four my sophomore year, but it turned out I ended up playing three. And uh, Sonny Allen put all that together. Um, I don't know what made him make that switch, but it obviously worked out very well uh, since we won the national championship. And that was, it's hard to believe that was 50 years ago. All right. Yes. And uh, I appreciate where you uh, got me in contact there of uh, Dave Twardzik. You know, he came on a, a past episode, but, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, Oliver Purnell. I mean, the other ODU alum that has come back and and coached the men's program. You know, he was he was part of that team. And and what just about a year or two ago. The Virginia Sports Hall of Fame honored um, Sonny Allen with inducting him and, and his family uh, came in to accept the honor. So just uh, just great uh, Monarch alums there being part of uh, Monarch basketball there in the mid-70s. No, we, we had hoped that Sonny would have been inducted while he was still alive. It was a right. shame that he wasn't. Um, don't know all the reasons for that, why that never happened with his history of and success that he had. But anyway, he um, he got in there and, and his son Billy was here and Billy, you know, accepted that and gave a nice talk. 
Um, it was a very special time and um, just one of those things that, um, you know, you're just very grateful for to be a part of. I mean, Sonny was a great basketball coach, but a great man. Um, wanted the best for his players, not just that, just um, basketball wise, but um, academically. Right. I, can tell you, I can tell you a humorous story. My freshman year, I almost lost my scholarship because of my grades. <laughs> <laughs> he called me into his office. There were six weeks left of school, and he said, I just want you to know that if Grace came out right now, you're right. In I'm like, whoa, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so I really buckled down and studied and um, right. got my grades up where I was. And then I, after that, I, um, not that I was a great student, but I, I didn't come close to not being eligible after that. But but that's the way he was. And I'll tell you what, he, I wasn't the only one sad. There were two other guys in my same boat and, and did not make it. Um, mm. But anyway, I really enjoyed playing for Sonny. And people asked me, you know, I got to play for Paul Webb also. Yeah. He yeah. recruited me out of high school. And um, Paul was a great guy. And I felt very fortunate that when I, I played for Sonny, and then Sonny went to SMU and then Paul came in. But I'll be honest with you, I tell everybody this. Well, who'd you like playing for the best? I said, well, <laughs> Because Sonny was an offensive-minded coach. Right. <laughs> and you can't help but like to play for him because uh, right. it was always about offense. And, you know, people talk about defense wins championship. Well, me and a, another 11, 12 guys know <laughs> that offense can also win a championship. We proved that. So, right. And you mentioned you brought up Oliver. Oliver was the captain of that team. And which you can tell why he was a very successful coach. We could tell that when he was a captain of our team. And um, he made sacrifices. He used to be the one man. And then Joey Carruthers came in. Okay. And Joey was the absolute perfect point guard for Sonny Allen. And so Sonny had to work him in and move Oliver to the two spot. And Oliver accepted that and left the one spot because he knew we were better with Joey at the one spot. So he's the, he was the, and I haven't seen Oliver for the longest time. I hope he comes back for whatever they do for us this year. He was right. here with Paul Webb uh, at his funeral. First time I seen him in goodness, probably forty years or something. Okay, well, I got a I got a text out to uh, Mike Jones and Odell on uh, on on uh, telling them that Rags is is interested on getting uh, Oliver here uh, here on my podcast. So I'll uh, I'll see if a couple couple requests out there. See if it. Uh, at least through the phone, if it uh, comes through. Well, I hope you get him on it. That'd be great. Thanks. Well, and after Old Dominion, I know you got to play uh, Athletes in Action, and that is a great, um, great opportunity there uh, through uh, through sports and uh, playing tough competition. Well, Athletes in Action – um, used to play, uh, they don't do it like now, like they used to, where we were, it's a year round ministry and we played 40 to 50 games a year all over the, the world, literally yeah. all for the purpose of sharing our faith in Christ. Right. Uh, I played with some guys that got drafted. Um, nobody made it to the NBA. They got a couple guys got drafted, but Mark, the biggest thing about athletes in action was, uh, Gail and I were married my last two years on the team. I played five years. Okay. And in those two years built the foundation for our marriage and also developed friendships with other players. I, I'm getting ready to go on vacation in about a week and a half, and I'll meet two guys I played with, one from Iowa, one from Massachusetts. And this will be our 40th year getting together vacationing. And we stopped uh -huh. playing again like in the early 80s. But that's they're like brothers to me. And that's um that's what AI was about for us individually. I mean we couldn't have um, done a lot of things without uh, those relationships that we had with them. It was awesome. Yes. Yeah. And then when, when did you get the bug to, to uh, start coaching basketball or, you know, was it when you started teaching there Atlantic shores and then, and then over to Portsmouth Christian? Well, I guess I could say I got the bug when I failed at about three businesses. Okay. <laughs> I tried real estate. I tried, I had a partnership with a friend of mine that went under and then I tried working for another printing company. And then I said, you know what? 
I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can get a coaching job and teaching position. And that's when I got the job at Atlantic shores. We won't talk about that. Uh, we'll just say that after one year, they didn't like what we did. And so he got rid of me and you know what? It was all good. Cause I got over to Portland Christian and Portland Christian became our home for the, well, yeah. that was, in, that was 1995 and we're still involved. Gail taught there 28 years. The boys both graduated from there. And uh, I started my driving school there. So, right. yeah. God, God always knew what was going on. We just didn't know it all the time. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, it's amazing how he's he's always in control. And you know, with this podcast that I have, I mean, I always thought when I was growing up, I'd become a broadcaster. But I didn't. Um, I didn't go. I didn't go to college. So you know, the Lord had a plan there for. Uh, 27 years at the at the shipyard and then and then ran into a friend in 2021 that gave me this platform so it just uh shows how he's in control yeah and you're doing a great job with it enjoying it well thank you and and hey um i know with uh talking to chris i know with uh you know being uh being married to elizabeth i know uh i know they're with um you know uh samantha there that uh ended up uh being a monarch as well there uh there when she went to school and just uh just a small world here with uh being part of their family getting to know you guys uh better we're glad you've done that we've enjoyed getting to know you better too thanks uh thanks jeff well hey um you know and then and then just the last thing i mean i saw that uh you know, Old Dominion there uh, honored you with your, uh, you know, student athlete as a monarch there in uh, 1996, being part of the ODU Hall of Fame. Well, that was um, a very pleasant surprise, I'd say. I, I, I guess I'd say that I'm, um, I'm very humbled by it. And as a year, when it first happened, I felt you know, I was excited and blessed and everything. And I don't think I really appreciated as much until later on. It's even like um, this year being the 50th anniversary of the national championship. I've reflected back on that in my Hall of Fame career and thought, you know, I've really been blessed. And, and it's not that I'm arrogant or proudful in a sense, but it's just happy for the what the what the Lord's allowed me to do and the success he's given me. Um, I mean, you know, a national championship and a Hall of Fame career and playing with three other guys in the Hall of Fame, Joey, Wilson, and Oliver. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was a lot of guys. Can I tell you a funny story about Wilson, though? Yeah, sure thing. Wilson sells cars, and so my driving school, I buy a lot of cars from him. Right. One day I'm in his office, he pulls out this uh, paper. We graduated the same year, and he went to Maryland. I went to Old Dominion. Oh, okay. And I'm looking at this. This He had a sheet that had the All-State the all team. Right. So we were both second-team All-State in right. 1973 when we graduated. Yeah. I'm like, Wilson, I said, I can understand why I was second-team All-State. Why the heck were you second-team? <laughs> he goes, look who's first team. Moses Malone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, that explains a lot right there. Well, you know, Moses went was going to go to Maryland, and then he went oh. to ABA, and then Wilson went to Maryland right. for a semester and yeah. was homesick and um, came here and led us to a national championship. It's perfect timing for us. <laughs> yeah, wasn't he the MVP? He was the MVP of the tournament. Yeah. Yes. And he, he wasn't um, – Wilson wasn't the leading scorer on the team. He was leading rebounder. But he was an intimidator on defense, and um, he was that – he was the guy, okay? I, I don't – I mean, we could have – we may have won it without him, but with him, it made it a lot easier, basically. It wasn't, it wasn't easy, but, you know, he – I mean, he's the guy that went on to play in the NBA, you know, and played overseas, you know, so uh, he's, a, he's a character. He's a character. I was, yeah. It was fun to play with him, fun to play Joey. Um, the three of us were real close because we were the same year. And um, 
But anyway, yeah, it was. It, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens if they what their what's going to happen at ODU this year with the 50th anniversary. I hope they do something. Yeah. It's just not like anyone else has won a basketball championship. I mean, on the men's side, I don't want right. Hans to hear me say that. You know, because right. you championships. But uh, anyway, <laughs> we'll see. What, I'm I'm excited for ODU basketball this year. Okay, right. for the first time in a long time. Right. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, you know, and it's nice here to um, not only with Mike being an alum and leading and and being the leader, but then also with having Odell, another alum, being yeah. being part of his coaching staff. You know, Mike Jones. I remember him. I remember Odell more than I do Mike Jones, but I remember him being there. But when you look at what he's done to go and coach at Dematha. Yeah. Where he replaced a legend. You know, you're it's not like you're just replacing anybody. You're replacing a legend, a guy like you're replacing Dean Smith or somebody like that. And to win 89% of his games, right? The competition he played, he 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 knows what he's doing. And I hope he brings all that to Old Dominion and things turn around and we start getting to some NCAA tournament playing that I can try to pick them in the bracket to go to the final four. Right. Whoever I pick doesn't go. So. <laughs> right. well, hey, uh, Jeff and Chris, appreciate your, uh, your time here of uh, coming on and, uh, and sharing y'all's uh, y'all's stories and uh, appreciate time. And yes, Jeff, as it is the uh, 50th, anniversary here of the national championship team well thank you we really enjoyed it and appreciate being on with you yeah, all right you. sure thing talk to y'all later take all care right, see you soon. bye bye